Hey, what's up, guys? It's Vexion here, and today I'll be doing the definitive Operation Dread Factor tier list. The season dropped a little more than a week ago at this point, so now I've kind of formulated my opinion. I've played ranked enough to kind of get a feel where the operators are in the current meta. And I'm going to inform you guys on what operators you need to be picking. This also will include Fenrir at the very end, so stay tuned for that. Starting off, we have Sledge. Sledge is solidly in B tier. He's still a good operator, but he's a little bit slow. Thatcher is also in B tier. While Thatcher is still incredibly useful, there are operators in the game that do his job arguably better now and are more versatile. Smoke is still an S tier defender, incredibly good, and will almost always be an S tier defender until the end of time. Mute, honestly, is kind of a B tier operator as well. Well, previously, he's been pretty good. There are, again, defenders in the game now that do his job arguably better and more effectively. That being said, he's still pretty good on most sites and is almost a jack of all trades between his shotgun and SMG secondary. Next up is Thermite. Thermite is a B tier hard breacher and arguably one of the worst hard breachers in the game right now. His guns are decent, but his kit is a little bit lackluster. Though, with the addition of secondary EMPs for a few attackers, he's actually not that bad and can still be brung on some maps, if not most, if you're using him properly. Next up is Ash. Ash is D tier. There's not much of a reason to bring Ash. Uh, just bring a Zofia instead. She's kind of underwhelming in the current meta, and I think she does need a buff in some way, shape, or form to kind of be performing at the level that she needs to be. Next up is Pulse. Pulse is a B tier defender. He's a decent roamer, and in sync with a Solus is really good. Solo is also good. Solus does not directly replace Pulse, but rather pairs quite well with him. That being said, there are still better defenders than Pulse, though he is not bad. Up next is Castle. Castle is B tier. He's still pretty actually you know what castle's a tier i thought about it for a minute and i played ranked a few times today against the castle and it was a little bit annoying considering now that he has more barricades he still has a decent kit the secondary super shorty shotgun is actually super useful on him and i've been seeing a decent amount of people play castle as a pseudo roamer where they set up site or they set themselves up with castles and they roam because he can escape with that super shorty shotgun and he has a decent kit as well next next up is montang montang is f tier he's permanently and will always be in my opinion the worst attacker defender he's just so bad don't ever bring monte if i see you on my team and you're playing monte i'm gonna team kill you most likely next up is twitch i think twitch is a b tier uh attacker right now i just she's good her guns are good but they did get kind of nerfed into the ground she's not as useful as an infantry fragger and honestly even though we're in the gunfight meta the gunfight operators like ash and like twitch are really kind of nowhere to be seen and there are more useful more adaptable more versatile attackers in the current lineup next up is doc doc is b tier a lot, a lot of these guys are b tier uh he's decent he's not bad uh, i think he's a little bit more tanky now uh the actually you know what He's actually A tier. I, I didn't, you know, I kind of forgot they have, he has the Bailiff. Giving him the Bailiff and also allowing him to kind of heal himself makes him a really versatile roamer and relatively strong. Even though he's not the fastest roamer, he is kind of a, a decent like tank option where you can just kind of let him like sit on an island by himself. He can escape. It's not going to be a fast escape, but he can escape and he can kind of hold his own. Uh, I've been playing a lot of roaming docks recently. And it's actually been pretty interesting to see how they play out and they actually play pretty profoundly. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to bump him up to A tier, even though I think he might be B tier. He's still not bad. I do highly recommend him. Next up is Rook. Rook is B tier. Uh, he cannot heal himself, but allowing himself and his teammates to resurrect based on the armor changes that were done some time ago. Puts him in B tier. Decent kit. Not bad. Fuse is C tier. Uh, he just kind of lackluster. He's slow. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of where he is right now. Again, like he's pretty useful on some maps. Chalet comes to mind. Any maps with vertical, uh, he's pretty good on. Though, in the current meta, he is a little bit lackluster. Next up is Glaz. Glaz is D tier. I think Glaz, there's a case to be made for Glaz. Uh, in, if you pair him with Ascends, if you pair him with a Capitao. But honestly, because you need to pair him with another operator, he's just kind of mediocre. Next up is Tachanka. Tachanka is in E tier. I don't think he's great right now. I think he's honestly kind of piss poor. Uh, there's, there's no really way to get around it. Goyo is better than him. Smoke is better than him. And then arguably Fenrir is better than him. And we'll be getting to that later. Though... There's just, there's no really redemption for him. Uh, Ubisoft reworked him, but it feels like they need another rework already, and that's kind of sad to see. Next up is Capkin. Capkin is like triple S tier. Uh, I've been playing him almost. It seems like every game there's a Capkin. Uh, he's kind of like creeping into my perma ban territory, and uh, it, it's just the fact that like there's just a lot going on in Siege right now, and spending the extra five seconds to look at a doorway is not something that uh, I, I really want to be doing. Nor should I feel like I have to do. It feels like it's it's antithetical to Siege. I can understand Thorn, right? I can, I get Thorn, right? I like Thorn. I understand Legion, but Capkin is just it's just a free forty damage if you're not taking. 
map control with your team it's an l if you don't have good teammates that know how to drone it's an l it's overall an l <laughs> so for that reason uh if you're just an idiot he's like pretty good and then even if you're not an idiot still like i've been playing in relatively high ranked recently and i've been playing in some custom tms and it, it just seems like he's just still super viable still versatile he gets five of them even if it is not free damage it still burns time off the clock and his presence is a nightmare to deal with plus he has really good guns f tier is blitz uh he's terrible uh every shield operator in this game is just absolutely abhorrent uh the shield rework in season four needs to come faster but i, I feel like that's not going to do anything it, it is just a it's just not very good he they're they're just bad uh there needs to be something that's fundamentally different with them iq is in c tier her guns are decent her kit is not bad but just bring Brava instead which we'll be getting to toward the end of the tier list why you need to be doing that uh, i don't think iq is a troll pick i think iq is really good and i think iq is an adaptation pick meaning that you're going to pick an iq not on the first round but more likely on the second and third round after you get a feel for what the defenders are going to be doing if they're running in an intel heavy comp on defense i think iq is a great counter pick and she does have her place on the team but it's not going to be that common next up is bandit bandit is a tier i think bandit is overall pretty good though i do think he's lackluster i i think he's, he's not in the s tier realm but you do need a bandit on almost every map if not a kaid someone has to you know deny the wall and for that reason i'm going to be choosing bandit especially with the, the kind of introduction of secondary emps and how they're kind of really helping the meta out, out a lot i'm seeing them brought a lot which makes things a little bit more interesting and more fun and because he can ban it trick effectively uh, i'm going to put him up there because he's at, it's actually pretty useful i know it's a little bit niche and it's not going to happen every time but when it does happen it's incredibly powerful next up is jaeger jaeger's s tier just the ability to kind of get rid of projectiles is pretty strong considering there's a lot of projectiles currently on attack uh s tier his guns are mediocre i still think the 416 carbine while is good it's just kind of been gutted that being said you do need to ring him and i think he's better than romai for that reason he's s tier he's almost needed on every single site in the game buck is a tier i think buck is a better sledge which is weird i usually would have never said that but uh, i've been playing a lot of buck uh, against a lot of buck as well and it just seems to be a better sledge sledge being a one speed now kind of is not great and just because um buck's a little bit faster because he can maneuver around the map a little bit more he can cut off flanks he can cut off roams by opening up lines of sight uh, i think i think he's just kind of a more versatile sledge and for like the first time ever buck is going to usurp sledge in the soft destruction role next up is frost s tier there's just so much going on with frost you have to look down when you enter a window which means you can't take a gunfight that means you lose uh, and if you take the gunfight and you step on a frost mat you lose um she's just again profoundly powerful almost always will be uh s tier blackbeard is f tier uh he's terrible i there's i they don't know what to do with him he needs to be fundamentally reworked i'm not going to say much more about it but he's pretty bad valkyrie is a tier uh, incredibly good great for information though i don't think she is the best information defender on this tier list we'll get to that later um that being said though again incredibly good on maps with soft uh destruction and vertical uh think maps like again villa really strong on villa think maps like theme park really strong on theme park really strong on border really strong on chalet overall a very strong pick in general that being said uh, i do think she does fall short in just a few categories she's still incredibly good great guns uh, and honestly maybe even deserves s tier but she's definitively probably top of a tier Capitao is S tier. Uh, I'm going to make a video elaborating why I think he is maybe the best attacker in the game right now. Um, but in terms of solo queue and just kind of presence on the team, he is the jack of all trades. He's kind of what mute is like for the defense, kind of for attack, not in the role they play. Obviously, they play different roles, but in terms of how versatile he is, and because there's no really true um like counter pick to Capitao besides Warden. And outside of that, there's also no true kind of um contemporary to Capitao. Like you could bring Grim. But just bring Capitao. You could bring someone like Sen for the smokes, but just bring Capitao. He can um, deny lines of sight, and then he can also deny areas of play, both of which are pretty powerful. And then his guns are pretty decent, and he's he's also very versatile. He's just very good. He's very strong. Um, I I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to show a clip here, but like recently, I basically just single-handedly won the round because I smoked two lines of sight, and then I threw a fire behind the smoke so they couldn't play behind the smoke. And then we planted, and then we had a fire for post plant, and then I just fired it off and then they couldn't do anything so it didn't matter and that's how powerful Capitao is and it happens more often than you like think like if someone's playing behind a shield and there's you know they're playing with ads's great a Capitao bolt done awesome someone's like 
got some weird vertical angle just smoke it off like he, he's just incredibly powerful and i feel like people are still sleeping on him uh basically religiously they're just sleeping on him they just they don't want him in the light of day even though i think he's probably the most versatile attacker in the game right now maybe the second most versatile attacker um compared to someone that's coming up soon next up is cav cav is d tier i like cav i think she's good at roaming uh i think it is like it's not bad like i don't have a lot of things to say like negatively about cav nor do i have a lot of things to say good about cav she's not bad she's not great but she's not very useful like her use case is on like maps that are just a lot of rooms not easy to drone out uh new consulate she's incredibly powerful on theme park she's not bad on emerald plane she's not bad on uh, maps like that that just have a lot of rat spots she's pretty good on next up is habana i think habana's a tier still an incredibly good hard breacher uh, one of the better ones if not the best one currently in the meta uh great for getting hatches decent guns uh, overall a great pick next up is echo echo i think is s tier i think he is definitively the best information um defender in the game you can play so much around with him you can do so much with him he's so strong no one's using him his guns are unbelievably good um you can roam with him incredibly effectively possibly the best uh roamer currently and you know maybe we're not ready for that conversation um definitively one of the best anchors and again one of the most versatile defenders in the game i've been playing an exorbitant amount of both capital and echo and for that reason you know again this might be a little bit personally biased but i think i've been using them very effectively um like just it, they're all just a great character like if you're solo queuing play these two characters if you're in a five stack play these two characters and you're going to win more rounds next up is jackal jackal is per, like just the perennial perennial a tier uh attacker great for roam clearing uh to, to honestly to roam clear me if, if i'm playing echo so i'm a little bit weird with that but yeah I, I, incredibly good I, I highly recommend uh playing jackal i i think he's good I, and i've been seeing him slip through the bands a lot more because there is attacker on this list that honestly needs to be banned every single game and because you're going to ban that attacker hopefully over jackal you can ban maybe play jackal i think again he's very versatile and very good next up is mira mira is an s tier defender uh, incredibly good if she makes it through the ban she's incredibly powerful allowing you to lock down lines of sight allowing you to lock down areas and applying a massive amount of pressure to the attack ying is also s tier she's just super powerful yes there is warden but in the current meta like you can just throw some yings in and some sends and if that pair like happens you basically lose if you pair basically ying with any smoke character you lose um she's incredibly good and the way the meta is going with the gunfight meta you throw some yings in it's a lot harder to win a gunfight if you can't see so this kind of negates and is it is like basically antithetical to the gunfight meta this is the, the opposite this is like oh you're flashed to get screwed buddy um so for that reason i'm putting her s here uh, also her guns are incredibly good highly recommend using her lmg it, it's great even if you're not going to use her ability uh, and her ability is incredibly good next up is legion i'll be putting legion in b tier probably the top of b tier maybe a tier i think he's really good but again uh fenrir just does his job better and uh, which sucks because i like legion but uh fenrir are, are arguably has better weapons and uh, i don't even think arguably i think he just definitively has a better kit than legion um so i'm gonna be putting ah, you know what? i'll put legion in a tier i actually you know i thought about it for a minute and like yeah legion's a tier but again I, I still think fenrir is better in almost every single aspect um that being said legion is, is still good and honestly like probably deserves to be a tier uh he's just very well rounded there's no shortcomings of legion he's just not as good as some of his counterparts currently on defense next up is zof zof is b tier not bad decent uh i rate her higher like just higher than ash i'm gonna leave it there i, I don't really have a whole lot to say about zof i, I think she's good but i think there are just better attackers uh she's versatile which is great but i just feel like she falls behind even though i do see a lot of zos i i have nothing against it if you pick zof like, that's a good pick but I, I just think there are better more optimal team compositions in the current meta and i think those uh, have yet to be kind of found and I, I think people are still kind of blind to some of the better picks right now next up is ella ella i'm gonna put ella in c tier I, again i just don't think she's that good I, compared to her counterparts i'd much rather have a fenrir on my team than an ella i'd actually rather have a legion on my team than an ella i would rather have a thorn i'd rather have just a million different uh like defenders over an ella is ella bad no i think she's situational I, I i still think she can kind of lock down areas but i don't think she's as good as she used to be i think there are other defenders that outshine her at her role next up we have doka b Nugby's S tier, easily one of the most powerful attackers in the game. Uh, her ability to call and then just kind of frag out with her DMR is still great. She has smokes to give her plants. Overall, she's just a really strong uh, attacker. I like seeing when I have Dokubi as my team. I personally don't like playing Dokubi because I think the gameplay loop of her is rather boring. But in a team setting, having a Dokubi is not necessarily needed, but it is it is a crucial component and it'll actually secure your the one condition more often in times than it won't. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to have to say like it is pretty easily an S tier 
Uh, attacker, would recommend bringing Dokubi. Vigil, I hate doing this, but Vigil is just D tier. Uh, I, I think Vigil is great on like two maps, <laughs> um, which is going to be like Oregon and like maybe Chalet or like an Oregon and maybe like a theme park. Um, but overall, like I just think there's a defender that does his job better and it, it just sucks to see. His guns kind of got gutted. They're not as good as they used to be. His kit overall is kind of lackluster in its current form. And while I do think his gadget is great, there's not much of a reason to bring a Vigil in most cases when you could just bring a Solus instead and do that job where you're kind of dancing around drones and negating information and also playing a hard roam uh the one thing he might have over a solace is that you know his guns are better even though his guns are pretty bad right now next up is lion lion is a tier actually you know what lion is s tier um the pocket emps just make him like super versatile and just way too good uh i can just throw any or i can it's lion scan throw any emp and then no one can like move around and then they can get the wall and in like conjunction with a dokubi like it's just really strong i actually am seeing the lion dokubi combo quite a lot recently where they dokubi to kind of like like pinpoint roamers and then they push them and then lion scan when they're pushing them so they're stuck there so they're just, they're just double stuck in one area and you have like just infinite information on them he's again really good in plants uh let's say you get the wall open oh he throws dmp then the hard breacher gets the wall open then you lion while planting now they can't really counter the plant on defense he's just just really strong also the gone six to get rid of bulletproof utility he, there's not much you can go wrong with picking a line. He's also a really good solo queue operator where you can just kind of do dumb pushes by yourself, drone yourself in, find someone, uh, then, then like kind of just hunt them down, lion scan, then push. Uh, again, still super strong and definitely recommend using it. Uh, overall, kind of an S tier attacker. I think uh, S tier uh, still really good. A lot of people are sleeping on her. Uh, she doesn't have the useful LMG anymore, but the spear is still great. Uh, the finger boost is still pretty good in, in the current meta, which is the gunfight meta. You're going to be taking a lot of gunfights, face checking a lot of things. Because you're face checking a lot, you're taking a lot of gunfights, you're incurring some chip damage here and there. I just have a think on the team to like kind of get rid of all that chip damage and just go back to go back to zero go back to, to like starting base 100 health um i think she's good uh is she going to be used in every lineup no but if she does find her way into your lineup then it's probably a pretty good thing i, I wouldn't like be upset about that next up is alibi alibi is teacher again she's strong decent weapons but it just it fit, like just pales into comparison to some of the other defenders later on this list and i do think she's a little bit too closed off kind of what the issue with vigil and cav is like their purposes are very very like just structured and like they don't offer much other utility besides oh and alibi arguably has one of the worst gadgets in the game period um yeah that's just how i'm feeling i uh, it just she's just not where she needs to be i feel like there needs to be something more an extra amount of oomph to her to kind of bring her up or maybe tone down some of the other other roamers right now so she can have some time to shine next up we have maestro uh maestro is s tier no one's playing maestro which is frustrating i think he's incredibly good perhaps i'll make a video on why like what happened to maestro because he's, he's gone he's gone missing uh back in the trap meta he was very prevalent uh, back in the information meta on attack and defense he was also very prevalent uh, i still feel like he should be very prevalent now um pairs incredibly well with a Fenrir. Uh, they get Fenrir trapped and then you're just getting Maestro. You don't know where you're getting shot from. It is, it's a hectic thing. Uh, it pairs really well with a lot of operators and for whatever reason, I'm not seeing a lot of defense uh, focused like players. I'm not seeing a lot of anchor players. It seems like the, the art of anchoring has died out. Most people are just kind of picking a two speed or a, a three speed and just kind of running around the map, which I understand to an extent. However, I feel like having a, a steadfast anchor on your team or two uh, of those would be very good and you just have an echo and a maestro both of these operators deny plant both of these operators provide invaluable information and they're both incredibly useful um so for that reason i'm gonna have to say like hey uh, he's s tier everything tells me he's s tier his kit is s tier just no one's bringing him which is uh, really sad next up is my dog maverick maverick is going to be a tier an incredibly good hard breacher uh very versatile though again i'm not seeing a lot of people bring maverick recently i don't know why that is however if you're not bringing maverick i highly suggest you do next up is clash f tier it's a shield operator um with the advent of the pocket emp it just makes it even harder to kind of justify her existence so for that reason f tier she needs to be reworked nomad is a tier great for watching flank i'm um, not particularly bad in any sense just overall very strong um nah, she, I don't even, she's not even strong she's good so like no downside there uh kaid a tier uh great basically same reason band is good also can get hatches gridlock b tier pretty good flank watch comparable and comparable to a nomad on some cases i'd say she's better than nomad uh but i feel like nomad in the gunfight meta just uh, has a little bit more uh with her weapons i think her weapons are slightly better than gridlocks um uh, that being said I, I don't think you could go wrong with either choice it's map dependent map with kind of like short uh, or maps with long hallways and like tight doorways i'd want to probably bring a nomad maps with wide open spaces i'm gonna bring gridlock gridlock on outback is great gridlock on chalet is pretty good gridlock on bank is pretty good nomad on maps that are a little bit different um theme park 
um like oregon those maps i'd probably want to nomad over good luck but again it's just it's map dependent um i don't think there's like a one clear answer but i do think uh in the current state nomad might be a little bit better in the meta next up is mozzie mozzie is b tier <sighs> mozzie's great i love mozzie it's just that like it's really hard to justify playing mozzie right now like he's a great counter to brava which we'll talk about later but like outside of that like just bring solace knock is easier knock for a little bit was riding on a, on a super high high and now knock is just, just average average uh attacker you know can get into the back line i, I do see quite a bit of knocks still i think knock is great on big maps i think knock excels on maps like um night haven labs like theme park like bank but like having a map specific operator right now in this meta is not great uh and more oftentimes than not with the current trap meta that's going on and again solace and again like other defenders not really making a lot of impact warden is a tier probably the top of a tier very versatile kit um denies a lot of like smoke plants that are happening right now denies a lot of just utility dumping which we're kind of seeing slowly shift back into the meta to counter the gunfight meta flash uh, angles uh, overall pretty good and, and honestly the way that like siege has come he's almost like i'm not gonna say a near like guaranteed pick but like i, I would it, it's very rare not to see a warden in one game like throughout the course of a game like he's gonna be there in one round one way or another amaro uh, e tier movement operator not great uh pairs okay with grim with grim's buff though i do i i still think she's useless uh, there needs to be something that changes um like she needs to be able to like have her gun in her hand while she's like a maru wing so she's like hip fire and then when she lands and her feet hit the ground then she's gonna ads I, I don't know it's just not great i'm, I'm never feel comfortable playing uh, on amaru she's strat specific uh and she's map specific so e tier goyo uh probably b or a tier i think he's just really well rounded he's got a good kit his weapons are great his his utility is good I, I have no major issues with goyo i just think again there are just better uh currently defenders I, I think fenrir is better than goyo uh i think smoke is better than goyo uh, but i don't think goyo is bad i think goyo can be good if you know where they're coming from if you can understand how to like manipulate the choke again theme park i'm gonna bring it up i think he's good on theme park i think he's good on oregon um maps that have like clear defined chokes he's pretty strong on next up is cali cali is easier there's just no reason to bring cali you can bring brava to get things off the wall you can bring the pocket emps to get things off the wall you can bring thatcher to get emps off the wall because he's being like uh, he's getting through sometimes um flores is better at getting hard utility and bulletproof utility so uh, i just uh, something needs to change with cali i don't know if she needs to have a dmr rather than the sniper i don't know if she needs to have like a larger exploding uh, explosion radius on her lance it's just i i just don't really see the the use case for cali in most situations well my is a tier i think my is good good kit it's not as good as jaeger um better than some of the other defenders in b tier um pretty decent on maps like canal pretty decent on maps like cafe where you're going to want to pair the wamai with the the jaeger obviously oregon is is another clear one though i i will say like you can get away with not having a my uh, though he is a decent option if you're not going to bring jaeger obviously and he's also just a decent option if you want to pair him with jaeger um and i don't think he's apparently bad i think he's actually pretty good in his own right uh, which is why he's landing himself in a tier not anything less next up is yana yana is s tier it's still the probably most impactful uh, attacker in the game in the gunfight meta you can get your own information you can drone yourself in you can fake with her clones her guns are pretty good uh, for that reason, I'm putting her S tier. I don't think there's a massive issue with Yana. Uh, I think she's just very versatile in this current meta. I think uh, you're going to see that kind of slow down. Again, Solus counters are pretty great. Uh, Mute is also a decent counter. So there's that. She's not, she's not bad. She's just not bad. She's just jack of all trades, just very versatile. And just, you just kind of send Yana in to go get the kills. Next up is Oryx. Uh, I think Oryx is a B tier. Decent roamer currently. Very strong, actually, in, in my opinion, to be honest not seeing a lot of people use him uh that being said i uh, nothing bad to say about him I, he's stronger than basically everyone else in in c and d and e and f uh but he's not as good as some of the people in a and s though i again still like strongly like, he's probably like middle to b next up is ace i'm putting ace as my s tier hard breacher uh very versatile very good good guns uh no issues with with ace uh, i'll basically essentially because you can get two different panels on a wall uh you it's going to be pretty hard to get uh bandit tricked uh you can get cage tricked but it, it takes some time and timing on ace is pretty good for that um for that reason i'm going to be putting him in s tier no issues with him uh i think that's a pretty solid s tier hard breacher next up is malusi uh i'm gonna put malusi in like c tier which is crazy to think about um malusi is like pretty 
good, but like because she can no longer roam and she has to play a hard anchor role, you're not seeing a lot of people play her because they like playing her in that pseudo roam style where you kind of set yourself up with one Malusi and then you put the other two in your sight on chokes and you kind of circle around and circle back to that and kind of play off those. Uh, now she she firmly has to put like all three in your sight and it's a uh, it's not a terrible experience, um, but she's no longer as fun to play and because she's no longer as fun to play not many people are playing her and there are other operators on defense that kind of are doing her job better and are more fun like thorn next up is zero uh, i think zero's a tier incredibly versatile just play zero uh guns are good gadget is fantastic in the current meta uh basically allows you to get a lot of information and if you're getting information it make, makes it easier to win gun fights aruni b tier at one point aruni was like really strong and now she's kind of fallen back even though her dmr does hit like a truck uh, i still think Brava is just a hard counter to Aruni. The pocket EMPs are a hard counter to Aruni. For that reason, uh, Aruni's B. Not bad by any means, but just average, like balanced. Honestly, like B is like should be balanced. I, I feel like every character in this in this kind of category is balanced. Um, they're not like overly strong, not over, like not weak, but they're just balanced. Next up is Flores. Flores is A tier strong uh can get most bulletproof utility in the game can do some decent damage is very effective when you pair it with a anything to be honest um any form of hard breach any form of soft breach very good very versatile all right thunderbird a tier super strong can roam cannot roam can do whatever uh kona stations are strong a tier i again like balanced but slightly stronger just good just play it just play her osa uh i'm gonna put her in a tier even though now she's slower and she's a little bit more tanky um she's still good play osa guns are great uh very effective at post plant very effective getting a uh, kind of a foothold into the building very effective at holding long corridors uh overall decently effective at clearing roamers uh i would highly recommend playing osa in most scenarios there's no major drawback to playing osa thorn b tier uh thorn's pretty balanced i think thorn is currently doing most people's jobs on defense better in terms of trap operators um, but she is lackluster she only gets three of her razor bloom shells honestly i feel like she needs a fourth to be truly balanced she's not as competitive as let's say a capkin even though she does have the ability to just completely insta ko you most times that's not really going to go off what's going to happen instead of getting insta ko'd is that you're going to be pushed out of your position and you're going to have time wasted she is not that bad in post plants or not post plants but she's not that bad at denying plant rather she can deny plant pretty decently by just getting you off the plant and like having you screw off for a little bit uh gun is really fun i really really enjoy her gun and i hope to see it on more um defenders or attackers it, it, just, it just feels great it's weighty it's impactful low recoil it's basically like the roni's older brother that's like on steroids uh it doesn't shoot as fast but it shoots as hard so for that reason kind of put the uh the the good old thorn at b tier a zombie is s tier uh i i'm sick and tired of seeing just the, the zombie bs in my games uh she's incredibly strong uh, i will honestly selfishly wish i knew how to play her better i really don't know how to play her to get the most out of her currently uh something that i probably will be learning in my solo queue to champ series which you can check out later every saturday uh <laughs> that being said uh still again pretty strong uh, very versatile uh and that's kind of like the theme of the tier list the more versatile the operator the more things that operator can do and can bring to the table the higher they are on the list um before i'd be like oh this operator is just super strong but now it's like this operator is super versatile and can do 10 different things okay and for that reason they're s tier rather than they can do one thing really well so that's kind of where siege is going not too sure if i like it i don't hate it but azami is a clear example of that Sends, uh, C tier. I, I think Sends is incredibly good. I think they're awesome to play. I think they're fun to play. I think the gameplay loop is rewarding. The issue is Sends is not good in solo queue, and also Sends is just really kind of hard to make work in a team environment. Again, just bring a Capital or a Ying instead of a Sends. Though that being said, I think Sends is good um, at creating chaos, uh, and I that's kind of what I just bring them for. I just you know chuck my Sends uh, balls, and it's, it's chaos. So that's that's what I like, like Sends for that reason. Uh, Grim is like really good now. Uh, like he is A tier. I don't think he's necessarily S tier. Uh, you can bring him over a Capital. I can get that in, in a lot of cases, honestly. And there are no downsides to pro like playing Grim. He's just super strong. He's fast. He's got good guns. Uh, decent at clearing out roamers. Decent at clearing out anchors. Decent at taking map control. Uh, a great example is going to be Rafters on Clubhouse. You just shoot your little bees up there, and it's basically impossible to hold without getting nuked by a nade or just getting pushed <laughs> because they have infinite, um, you know kind of info uh again really good at clubhouse's bottom basement really really good on maps with like tight quarter or not good on maps with tight quarters but good on maps that have like predictable like spots that you play um uh, that like can't be challenged normally uh so what i mean by that is going to be rafters it's a, it's a predictable spot that you're going to play but it's not a spot that you can play um like you you can push normally as an attacker right um oregon or yeah oregon basement is another one where people like to play elbow okay again predictable to play most people play there however you're not going to be able to push that relatively easily now with, with grim you can 
um so he opens up a lot of uh a lot of like kind of discussion about like hey like should i play here as a defender now uh like he, he's really good at getting that done and for that like he actually does serve his purpose arguably capital is better than that though not to the same extent and he's also good in the post plant where capital is not as good in the post plant he's decent still if you have a firebolt but the likelihood is that you're not going to at that point um so like he, he he has a lot of interesting value proposition and the way in which he interfaces with the game is, is super interesting and he gets a lot more value the longer he stays alive and the more of his little b things he has uh because it influences the game state in interesting and weird ways especially uh during plant and post plant next up is solus uh s tier i think solus is a better mozzie and a better vigil wrapped into one uh it profoundly powerful it honestly needs a nerf in some way i don't know how that's going to be longer cooldown maybe shorter duration of her gadget less range incredibly powerful i'm just going to put her in s tier and i'm just going to move on to brava who i think is like currently the strongest operator in the entire game uh, i've been playing a lot of bravas recently and basically brava has moved into my permanent ban territory at this point uh it is a nightmare to play against brava there is no counter to brava oh just bring mozzie well she can just go get her drone back or if you're a smart brava you just have your teammate sacrifice their drone for the cause i've seen it happen it is a nightmare playing against a brava is just it's just a miserable it's just like i'll walk into a capkin trap great awesome love that um our ads gets hacked oh great now i'm getting naded um it just it, the way in which that she has kind of like opened up the game is is ridiculous and i'm not gonna say that solace is, is a guaranteed like pick on defense but i've been playing a tremendous amount of solace um because brava is just so terrifying to play against because they can just apply so much pressure like brava can just apply so much pressure uh whether it be actual pressure uh, on gadgets or like just fake pressure it's like oh we have a capkin great now i have to watch doorways for my own capkin traps oh we have a rooney not anymore they can just walk through it um so for that reason like i i think she is just seldom like just seldomly on island just she's just so strong it's ridiculous um now let's talk about Fenrir hey Fenrir's not on this list because I've got this off tier maker so don't don't sue me but yeah it's not the most up-to-date thing in the world um hey that that happens we, we love to see it uh that being said if I had to place Fenrir uh editor bxt just uh like put Fenrir on my mouse Fenrir's gonna be in S tier uh, I think he's currently the strongest defender if not one of the strongest defenders um the fact that his Fenrir like blooms his Fenrir smokes uh are still active after he dies is ridiculous to me the fact that they are bulletproof and they're not activated is kind of mind-boggling the fact that when they are activated and you cross into it you get a notification so you can basically use it as an old school lesion where you just, you can see them to the wall and be like oh there's a guy there when it's activated across the map so you can see and you can kind of like play around with that with the roamer you can roam yourself with that like mechanic where you're like oh he's pushing my door and i can just swing him and they're blind uh, he's just so 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 strong and more often than not when you have a fenrir in a position rather than clearing that fenrir out like that fenrir like trap out what you do is you just avoid the position i was playing with gregor uh, my roommate he's currently doing a fenrir video uh, by the time this is out maybe that's out uh, but yeah in essence what happened is uh he would place his fingers around and he would play around them and instead of the attackers pushing them with an iq or like you know trying to get rid of them with like emps and like uh gone sixes it was like yeah we're not gonna push that because that's like way too much like it's, he's way too entrenched it's not what like just worth like basically giving up almost a like, guaranteed pick every time um so they'd rather just like ignore it altogether on some maps and some sites it's not going to be always applicable but more often than not if Fenrir is set up in a certain location um just avoiding it is kind of the best way to deal with it because it is a nightmare to deal with uh especially later into the round it is incredibly frustrating uh the fact that it gets five of them it seems a little bit like uh, strong to me the fact that he can activate three at once is a little bit strong the fact that they are still active after he, after he dies is, it, it is it, it blows my mind to be honest uh that is kind of the most infuriating thing the fact that they're bulletproof unless you activate them which is also kind of difficult to deal with uh, i know malusi is the same thing you can only like shoot them once um they're activated but unlike like that like you can actually see them and you know where they are because they make a noise when they're activated here uh not the, not the case uh it's it's a nightmare um because you have to look around you don't know where it is and then you end up dying like getting like trying to shoot it and it, it's a nightmare so for that reason Fenrir is easily s tier uh Brava and Fenrir have been like the strongest operators of, of recent memory like Brava is just super strong um Fenrir is super strong Solus is incredibly strong Azami was incredibly strong uh Grim now is also pretty strong um sends uh in certain cases is, is strong though they're not really up to the same standard as the other operators i mentioned but like it, it does seem like ubisoft has fundamentally shifted their ideology in terms of what they're what they're trying to do with operator balancing and uh, it seems like they're going with hey if everyone's overpowered no one is overpowered rather than releasing an overpowered operator and then everyone complaining every operator is now just going to come in the default state of being overpowered i don't hate that idea but the current like operators are just super hardcore power crept they're just super strong uh, but yeah, 
that, that, that's kind of the end of that philosophical discussion. Um, this is my operator tier list for Operation Dread Factor, the definitive one. Um, in the comments below, hey, let me know if you agree or disagree. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think the current tier list, the current meta of Siege is. I think we're kind of slowly moving away from the gunfight meta into a more of an information, uh, more honestly, like a traditional Siege meta, which is very cool, uh, very pog. That being said, there's a lot of strong operators as you can see like everyone from b and up i would consider balanced or strong i would say like b is balanced a is strong and s is like almost like a, a guaranteed pick and then c is situational d is lackluster uh e is terrible and f is don't pick so there you go that's that's the operator tier list hope you guys enjoyed see you guys in the next one peace